point was to say uh, there are no distinct uh, national models, uh, different national philosophies uh, of uh, integrating uh, newcomers or integrating new religions. That has been a topos in the literature which in a way is uh, antiquated. Uh, because if you look at the policy landscape you will see that in most Western European countries there are essentially two policies uh, to manage diversity which uh, are two policies that intervene in different phases of the integration process. Uh, in the early phase, for the early phase, you have called it civic integration policy, which subjects newcomers to uh, mandatory language instruction, civics, uh, civic knowledge uh, instruction and tests. Um, that is civic uh, integration and you find that first in Holland and from Holland it mushroomed to much of uh, Western Europe. And now it's about 10, 11 countries of the uh, uh, Western European core of the European Union that pursue that approach, civic integration. The other um, policy you have, and now in all European countries, because it's required under European law, is anti-discrimination. Uh, going back to the European Union directives of the year 2000, you now have uh, anti-discrimination policies. This is a policy that intervenes in a later moment of the integration uh, process. Uh, here uh, the idea is not the newcomer, is to adjust to the receiving society. Here in a way the burden of adjustment is more on part of, uh, of, uh, of the majority society which uh, unjustly discriminates against the uh, ethnic uh, minorities. There's much talk at European level uh, that integration is supposed to be a bi-directional uh, uh, process in which uh, newcomers and receiving society has to simultaneously adjust. But in reality what you have is two one-way processes, one civic integration burden on the newcomer and the other anti-discrimination burden on the receiving society. So uh, that, that's to me uh, the European uh, uh, standard approach to manage diverse societies. Now the question is how does religion come into this, which is more or less the uh, topic of this uh, meeting here. With respect to religion, I think that it is in essence constitutional law and established models of linking organized religion and uh, the state which determine uh, the process of uh, integration or of managing diversity. And with respect to constitutional law, all countries of Europe have uh, religious uh, liberty clauses which guarantee uh, that uh, possibility not just to the majority religion but to all, including uh, the minority. So no big uh, issue here, no specific policies, no multiculturalism required because the legal infrastructure is already there, a kind of egalitarian um, individual centered infrastructure that gu guarantees the equal uh, possibility to uh, exercise your religion. The, the bottom line of all of it then is uh, the Muslim issue to the degree that there is one in Europe is not a religious issue because that integration process has worked not perfectly but fairly alright, it's going into the correct direction. The bottom integration issue is socio-economic. If you wouldn't have uh, um, uh, an underclass of disproportionately unemployed uh, Muslims, uh, uh, an underclass of people who drop out of school, don't make it to university, not to mention they are not represented in elite universities, you wouldn't have Islam in Europe as, or Islam in the West as a topic of conferences like the one uh, we have today.